Hey, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to have all of you with us. Uh, today to discuss what I think is uh, uh, an important subject as we think about economic growth in the future. How is the underlying uh, change uh, to change the external conditions? Uh, but also in response to the global and civilian everything that's happened in the world. But also uh, uh, the way in which the nature of growth 那么我们也考到这个增长 经济的环境会有什么样的改变？那么从呃这个可持续性以及环境方面有一些什么样的变化？那么从这个呃新兴国家的环境来说，你会是嗯预计会是什么样一个变化？ I guess I'll try to be really specific. Uh, 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 some conflict uh, 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 like uh, 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 Almost in the sense needs to come in the developed world as opposed to the developing world. We have to look at the the uh, I'll be provocative and say um, uh, not quite a non-event, but much less of an event in the developing world than it is in the developed world. The nice and spread of India and the U.S. in some sense, and so my comments reflect that uh, schizophrenia in some ways. Let me give you two examples. Um, one from uh, uh, cutting-edge of science. 我可以看到这个科技的发展。那么我在一些跟创业的医疗的企业，跟他们进行合作。那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以看到，那么可以
在您的职业生涯当中，也经历了很多的这种危机，而且您是管理一些比较困难的这个危机。您是来自，你谈到这个新的增长的方程式的时候，你是怎么判断未来的一个增长的趋势呢？那么从金融的角度，您觉得金融业会对未来是不是从这个风险的角度啊？可能会有一些不同的做法，人们是不是会在承担风险方面会有不同的做法呢？那么从在新的现实的环境下，我们可以看到，也就是在大衰退的这个背景下呢，大家，如果我们看看呃欧洲的主要的银行，美国的呃大银行，还有日本的大银行，他们都是在呃世界的主要舞台上的主要的扮演主要的呃行业主要的这个嗯扮扮演者。那么从日本的银行。像目前从这个巴西的一些银行，现在他们也逐渐的成长起来，所以你可以看到，从在嗯新兴的国家当中，他们的金融业也逐渐的发展起来。从金融业的角度来看，现在。他们还在呃逐渐的发展过程当中，在 G20 呃的会议上，我们有一些新的安排，做的比如说这个呃巴塞尔第三的这个稳定委员会的一些新的规定。在国际层面，我们对实施呃这个来减少一些呃监管层面的套利的行为。那么，巴塞委员会说要减少，呃，需要哪个国家都必须呃来决定怎么样实施，怎么样符合巴塞尔协议的一些规定。同时，我们也看到，在中国以及印度的一些银行也在迅速的成长，他们都是很大的银行。我们也看到。越来越多的这个呃监监管方面的套利的行为，现在我们不知道啊，在新的资本的要求的实施情况会是怎么个情况啊？对一些成熟的经济来说，你不能是只是成熟的经济做一套做法啊。这个新兴的市场从事的是另一个啊做法，因为这个市场是相互关联的，他们必须统一行动。我们所需要的就是要。implementation here, because otherwise banks are going to find it difficult to lend what's necessary to their customers, including the small and medium enterprises, which are one of the ways out of this. Do you find that there's a value difference between emerging markets or emerging financial institutions and established? We're speaking at a moment, for instance, where there's a big question of the amount that Chinese finance may be involved in helping bail out Europeans. Is there a different set of values that are brought to the table? Is it your experience? It's basically the same set of values. Well, I think you've got to understand that banks are moving internationally. 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 And what we've got to do is to make sure that at the end of this, we don't get an interruption of trade flows. We don't get more protectionism because that will put us back into a second major correction. Some people think we never got out of the last. So I think the financial sector is very much up in the air. I mean, you have banks in London very concerned about the Victor report, and you have the lead regulator in Hong Kong saying, "Well, if you're not treated well in the UK, come on and move your head off." But are you are you finding though, as the as these new emerging markets finance institutions move on to the global stage, that the 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 the
所做的，应该确保的一件事是能够，嗯，能够很快速的能够响应市场客户的需求。他们应该跟监管者合作，他们提供，他们提供的是，应该是一个对国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以，这就是国家提供的是积极的贡献。所以， But I do think that the emerging markets are going to play not just in trade, in other areas, and technology, because we have some experts here who have some experts on technology. We 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 have some experts 是那个啊，发达国家跟发展中的国家的那个经济的差别，你能不能告诉我们你是怎么看那个中国的经济的未来，还有这个那个发展国家跟那个发展中的国家有什么差异？那么还是在几个月之前，呃，大家呢都这个信心鼓舞，说是这个世界经济呢正在走向复苏。那么最近几天呢，大家谈论的话题呢是。世界经济啊，会不会二次探底？那么为会为什么会出现这些问题呢？我觉得就是说，首先来讲，这个世界上几大经济体，呃，分别都出现了自己的问题。那么最大的这个经济体美国，那么出现了这个信用的这个国债的信用等级的这个下调。那么实质上来讲，也是一个这个债务危机。呃，因为你如果不提高上限的话，你就是就就违约了嘛，是吧？那么再有呢，就是欧洲的这个债务危机。那么日本呢，经济近差不多二十年来是处于比较低迷的这样一个状况。这次呢，又受了这海啸啊、地震啊这样的这个核辐射的这样的一个影响，对，也受到了沉重的打击。那么中国、印度还有其他一些个发展中的国家。他所面临的问题呢，是这个通胀的压力很大。那么刚才提的问题呢，说是这个发展中国家和发达国家，那么有什么不同？对，我觉得发达国家他所面临的问题呢，是一个就是说这个呃债务的问题。呃，实质上来讲，这是一个发展方式的问题。就是前些年呢，大家都鼓吹美国的这样一种发发展方式，它是以消费来。带动这个经济的发展，也就是自己花别人的钱，今天花明天的钱，实践证明撑不住了，对，是吧？那么欧洲的问题，债务问题也是这样。那么就是说，你这些个在欧洲相对这个经济不太发达的这个国家，那么大量的这个赤字，那么现在呢就要靠这个呃欧洲的发达国家去进行救援，甚至呢也希望中国能够。伸出这个援助之手，但是不管救援也好，还是什么措施也好，如果这种经济模式不得到改变，这个问题还是解决不了。那么，特别是欧元面临的一个很大的危机，如果像希腊、呃西班牙这样的国家，这个债务危机再进一步的发展，它总靠德国、法国这样的国家去救援，那么德国、法国这些国家的老百姓。会如何想这个问题？那么就面临着欧元的解体问题。嗯，就到目前为止啊，在历史上也出现过这个非主权的这样的一个货币，那么没有一个成功的。那么欧元这次能不能够挺过去，这是一个很大的这个考验。那么涉及到发展中国家现在呢，它所面临的问题，特别是中国面临的问题，就是通胀的这个压力的问题。实质上来讲呢。呃，中国的这个通胀的这个压力呢，来自于这些年的这个发展的速度太快了，嗯，太快了。它更深层次的问题呢，实质上来讲还是资源和环境的问题。我我觉得制约中国今后长期发展的，是资源和环境的问题。那么，我们应该从发达国家接受的教训，就是说不能够再走那种以消费拉动经济发展的这条路。那么我们在经济这个遇到困难的时候，很可能采取一些呃临时性的这种经济刺激的这个种政策，这是可以理解的。但是这个政策一定不能和我们的长期目标相背离
，如果和长期目标相背离的话，就是今天解决的经济危机的问题，给明天留下更大的隐患。对，对那你比如说，这个中国本来资源、能源就是非常短缺了，如果再用这个发展小汽车来刺激经济发展、大力经济发展，那么我们很可能。在几年、十几年以后，这个局面不可收拾。我们现在的这个石油的对外依存度已经超过了百分之五十，大概去年是百分之五十二。我们的铁矿石的依存度已经超过了百分之七十，这样的发展是不可持续的。对。呃，因此呢，我们呢就是说，必须既解决当前的我们面临的经济困难，又要考虑长期的发展目标，不能和长期的发展目标这个相违背。因此，我觉得中国政府呢是非常明智的。那么，在“十二五”规划当中呢，提出来要转变经济增长方式，要调整经济结构，这样呢就是可以使这个中国的经济呢，避免走发达国家它出现的这些问题。啊，我我的认为呢，就是说，这个当前的这个国际形势下呢，呃，各国都要根据自己的国情来选择具体的这个呃政策，啊，来呢度过。眼前的困难，同时呢，全球要合舟共济，共同度过这个当前的困难，这就是我的。那好的，你说的特别清楚呢。呃呃呃 ，Sir Michael, I'm wondering if you can sort of pick up on on that theme of the the sort of underlying shift of development between these sort of these these different models.、Mm. Uh, what are the lessons from the developed world versus the developing world that you see as applied to this debate? I, mean, I, I think, it, firstly, a, a, briefly, a couple of things that I think are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. I think there are some things that are critically important. 啊，很重要的呢，就是我们现在要创造就业，特别是要为年轻人创造一就业。在中东呢，我们有看到呢，很大的一个失业率，百分之十五的失业率。啊，如果是这样的话呢，社会的基础整个的构架呢会崩溃。啊，所以我们要创造就业。啊，要做到这一点呢，我们需要拿出强大的啊政治承诺。在一方面，啊，我们需要呢有公平竞争的一个金融市场，我们要有很好的金融政策，啊，我们呢来需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我们呢需要呢有很好的这个贸易政策，啊，我
在美国，在欧盟。他们面临着很大的一个债务问题，他们现在不能够摆脱这个债务。How fundamental of a challenge do you think? I mean, just to get to Chairman Yu's point, how how fundamental of a challenge does the crisis of the last 48 months represent to everything that's come before? I mean, is it a matter of some small structural fixes? Is this really a profound crisis of capitalism? 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 You know, from a regulatory point of view in the financial system, to understand what we need to do is 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 to understand what we
我们应该嗯、呃、谈一下呃，中国有个有个词啊，叫做危机啊，危也是机，也是给我们带来机会。What we haven't seen in the so-called mature economies, whether be Europe, the United States, and certainly Japan, is we haven't seen leadership. Maybe this will force a leader to take on this. 啊、呃，因为呃，如果你不拿出领导力的话，它的弊端是非常大的。啊、呃，我昨天呢，我们也谈到了 G 二十，啊，就要等到十一月啊，但是我们不能等那么久啊，我们现在应该召开银行的会议。所以，我们大家知道应该做些什么事情。现在的问题就是说，我们需要有一些领导的，呃，时间已经不太多了，我们需要这些领导人坐在一起。我们现在在这个，嗯，不需要再次有这个衰退。现在呢，其实。Uh, Tan Tan, let me uh, get you to speak from the Vietnamese perspective a, a, a little bit. Uh, one of the things we've obviously seen in the last few years has been the, the flowering of the Vietnamese economy. How do you look at the, the sort of new reality for growth for, for emerging markets perspective like Vietnam? And how to find out a new model and economy? And before the people own the time. They focus on the low model, and that is the focus. Uh, mainly focus on service, finance, and second is the industries, and the last is agriculture. And uh, that makes the world consumption of natural resources within a hundred years more than a few thousand years ago. It means that natural resources and and less and less because we much more focus on industry. And we come from the agricultural country, and we think that the developing country and agricultural country need to focus on how to make the agriculture product more valid. And then, before in Vietnam, we follow the model that I post and rely on foreign investment. And we think that that is a solution for us to grow. And also, sometimes we think that the model of China, China also focuses on high-tech also. And the government also really makes a lot of time to invest and to focus on high-tech to make it more valuable. But actually, not successful. That's why now I think that the world now more and more people and the population grow and also higher. And now we are facing the security, and so I think that different countries will find out different models. And because now the world crisis making the world changing so much, and even now so many famous experts, they also don't know when we can recover back to the time before the crisis. And also in the country. Where the survey is very high, like U.S. and European Union, they focus mainly on finance and how to create a new environment or a new theory for economy, for example, and to make the world change and to apply for the world for the next century, for example. But actually, we come from a different country. We think that uh, we need to focus on agriculture, and then we use agriculture as the, uh, the main point. Let's say we use fuel, biofuel, for example. It means that we need to rely on natural resources, and also now many factors to using the solar power, also using the agriculture, or even the rubber, you know, rubber before mainly, and also glow. Come from oil also, and now we can rely on agriculture. And I think that if we rely on agriculture, we can remain the global. Because you see, few thousand years ago, and our our global still remain very safety, very environmental. But within only hundred years, the past hundred years, but we use forty percent of the world natural resource already. And natural resources, natural fuel, ocean fuel, will be run out within the limited time. And how will it be run out? And I think that, of course, from the country like our country, our country will have. And we think that is the solution. And also, you know, the living standard of people higher and higher. Before people rely iPhone, iPad, and high tech, for example. But now they're coming to the limit. And not easy to be high. People focus back on the healthy people. And so it means that we need to improve the food 
like the way of China. We put food and medicine conform the the some herb, not conform the the the, 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 uh, the uh, chemical, for example. And and I think that that is the way the agriculture countries like us put their own the food on and uh, the big. Uh, send for us to improve our economic situation. How are you finding investment flows into Vietnam these days? Are they continuing uh, relatively strong? Uh, you know, that's uh, invest, how to attract investment to Vietnam. How to make that investment to Vietnam more active, 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 能够获得更多的这个财呃这个投资回报，这是也是非常重要的。我们现在在越南跟日本，我们在日本的呃现在的消费呃已经减少了。那么现在我们呃当时日本的做法，他们就是开放整个社会，所以越南应该向日本当初的日本学习。我们需要开放。And how to make the Japanese economy outside Japan, and we encourage them to set up the Japanese economy. And so that model can help them when they have a big tsunami. They still can keep the market dynamic. I return here from Japan. I met with the Japanese chairman. He said to me that after the tsunami, he will buy. And his share, market share, is 60 percent of the world. But because it's late, and it's late, it's late to supply. And that's why, and not only, only Hitachi, many other. And so they face the inflation and Vietnam policy. That we think that is the way we. We give more incentive for them and closer cooperation. And when they come together, and they also support back to the country when they make more profit because in Vietnam they will cost to keep land and many available resources still remain like two hundred years ago. So, Professor Kana, what we're hearing in the survey, what's been said since your remarks is, is this sort of Transitioning global landscape, people like the Vietnamese changing their own model for attracting investment. How much is this sort of like a temporary reaction to a shock? You think this is not a short-term reaction to a much larger crisis in the value of the kind of globalized system of the 80s and 90s? In the 80s and 90s, did you revert to a question posed? Just a few minutes ago, which is the role of finance change. 谈到的这个呃金融呃界的一个作用发生了改变啊，咱们讨论的这个话题，这个金融呢，仍然是很重要的。我们可能。Lost our sense of moderation. Lost, lost some basic elements of good governance. We may need to develop more. 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 We may 使得人们更多的做出贡献。嗯，在过去的二十到三十年里头，那么我们可以看到有很大的冲击。我并不是说，呃，在过去的四十八年的这个呃金融的危机，你可以再看看过去的二三十年，其实有有很多呃，比如中国世界进入到世界呃贸易的体系当中，所以这是一个很大的变化。可以看到这是一个很积极的一个变化啊，从消费的角度来说，如果in the United States, you wish it's going to go down when you have another 500 million unskilled people entering the world. And we should have another shock like that. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got another billion people in China. We've got a billion people in Africa, we've got 那么，呃，现在的挑战就是说，大家怎么样呃走在一起？能现在没有这个很好的领导力，领导的这个努力的出现。我们呢，常常讨论的题目是，呃，中国是不是一个市场经济？呃，但是你刚才提的是那个中国的那个“十二五”的规划。
呃，你能不能告诉我们那个一个市场经济跟那个规划经济有什么样的那个关系？呃，实际上呢，中国呀，这个已经是第十二个五年计划了。原来呢，是我们在“十一五”之前叫计划，对。那么在“十一五”之后呢，叫规划。规划对。那么实质上来讲呢，呃，我们这个国家呢，已经做了一些调整。计划嘛，是要实现的，是要兑现的。那么规划呢是一个指导性的，那么有些个也有一些硬的约束指标，比如说节能减排，它属于硬的约束这个指标，但是更多的呢是属于导向性的，是指导性的。嗯、那么因此呢，就是说，呃，它和我们国家的市场经济体制是不相违背的，因为那么市场呢，我们呃主要是这个靠市场的进行调节，但是呢，国家。宏观上总要提出一个这个指导的原则，我们国家的发展这个方向，我觉得这正是啊中国经济的一个优势。那么刚才呢，就是说这个这位先生呢提到了关于政治体制的问题，对，比如说这个中国的这个领导人呢，他可以从一个很长远的时间里头规划中国的这个未来的发展，因为都是中国共产党执政。那么他可以想这个五年、十年、二十年的这个发展，而这个现在这个西方的一些国家呢，它都是这个两党。那么下一个五年、下一个四年，到底谁来执政我还不知道了，因此我没有办法去想下一个东西。这这个话题就是比较远一点了。我觉得呢，我们制定这样的一个五年的规划，和我们市场起这个基础性的调节作用，这个一点也不违背。呃，应该说呢，现在的这个中国呀，呃，我认为是一个完全的呃市场经济这个国家啊，就是说这里头也涉及到一些发达国家对我们的评价问题。我觉得他们如果是有企业在中国的话，他应该承认中国是一个开放度最高的这样国家。你像美国，号称是这个世界的这个呃市场经济的榜样，但是他很多领域里头不允许别人进去。啊，这中国的企业进入美国市场就受受到了很多的阻碍，但是你看美国的这个呃公司，呃在中国受到什么阻碍了？不但不受到阻碍，还受到欢迎，还很很多的这个优惠政策。因此说，中国不是市场经济的国家的话，我觉得就没有市场经济国家了啊啊。你说的是比较清楚，还有呃另外一个问题是是呃关于那个国进民退啊呃那个问题你是怎么看？我觉得呢，现在不存在着这个国进民退的问题，在历史上呢，我们确实存在着一个国退民进的问题。也就是说，在九十年代的中期，我们国有企业进行改革，改革的时候呢，大量的中小的国有企业，基本上呢，国有资本都退出了，那么是大量的民营资本呢，这个进入了这些领域。那么这些年呢，我们的国有企业由于进行了。这个体制和机制的改革，它有了一个很快的发展。确实，国有企业经过这个呃九十年代的这样的一个改造，呃，我们称之为新国企，呃，新的新型的国企，新型的国企和老的国企，应该说已经是脱胎换骨了。它有很大的这个改变，它不论从经营的这个体制上，还是它的内部这个机制上，都已经和这个民营企业的。有的没有太大的差别，那么特别是和一些个跨国公司，啊，那么没有太大的这个差别。当然，我们还在力求这个进一步的进行这个改革。那么，之所以现在，呃，大家这个提出来，现在有一个这个国进民退的这样的一个，呃，好像是大家的议论，我觉得呢是两个方面的原因。一个方面的原因是国企。这些年，由于进行了体制机制的改革，它发展非常快。对啊，给人觉得就是它进了。那实质上来讲呢，民呢没有退，民在所有的领域都没有退出。但是大家为什么又感觉到民退了呢？是所谓的中小企业贷款难。中小企业贷款难不但在中国存在，在美国也存在。为什么呢？银行它都是要规避风险的，显然给大企业贷款，它这个更保险一些。因此呢，他希望呢，这个给大企业的进行贷款，扶持大企业，这样呢就出现了，越是大企业越能够得到这个贷款，它的发展速度越快。那么越是中小企业呢，它这个由于信用等级不够，它
他越不容易得到贷款，他发展的就比较缓慢。因此，给人大家的一个错觉、一个印象是，好像是国际呃，这个这国进民退。我认为，在中国，事实上不存在。这个国进民退的问题，而且我们国家现在制定政策，那么对于一些个基础建设的这样的一个领域，也要向这个民营企业这个敞开。那么应该说是在这个领域里面，应该是民企在进，而不是在这个退。当然呢，我们要解决中小企业贷款难的问题，啊，要制定一些政策，要建立呃一些机制来解决这问题，使民营企业。更快的发展，这个是说实在的，这个是符合我们国家利益的，啊，国家也是鼓励民营企业发展的。我个人认为，在中国现实没有国进民退这个问题。好的，呃、uh, ，Bill, one of the arguments he made touches on on a point that, that you yourself discussed, which is this problem of sort of increasing the lending to the small and medium-sized enterprises, which is where job creation occurs. You've sat inside large financial institutions where these decisions are are made. What's going on right now in the minds of these banks? And we've talked a lot about this need for certainty, but. From a financial standpoint, what what are the calculations that are going on? And let me also pose that in a different way, which is we're in this very strange world where one thing that the large banks in both the developing world and the developed world share is that many of them are now trading below book value, and so the people running these banks are also operating in this sort of strange external、uh, environment in terms of their own investment. So as, they, as people sit in those boardrooms and contemplate the, the, the landscape of lending, what are they thinking when they're deciding not to lend to small and medium-sized b u s i n e s s e s I think there's been a tremendous effort. 我觉得在下面，在这个方面呢，就全世界的金融啊机构呢，都需要下大力气。呃，因为这个市场，中小企业的借贷呢，是一个不断增长的市场，而且呢，是一个啊利润不断增长的一个市场。我觉得。You need more in the way of leadership here, but in this particular area, this is an area of, of, of great interest, and it's going to grow. This area is very interesting, and it is. But I guess my question is just to press you a little bit on it. Is it is it profit creating? Is it bonus creating? Yes. The, so people on Wall Street, if they've got a choice between not just Wall Street, because we're talking about an interlinked worldwide economy, and this isn't just something out of Wall Street, it's worldwide. But am I wrong to say that there's more time? Being devoted on Wall Street today to the creation of、uh, synthetic financial products that basically have no economic value than there is time being created to develop new financial products. They were 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 they But second of all, I think we've had a great improvement in the risk management systems by the banks worldwide. But is that being applied? I guess we're just to be precise about it. I mean, are the great minds on Wall Street getting up every morning saying, "How can we be better at lending to small and medium-sized enterprises?" I think that in the banking system, I mean, you kind of confuse investment banking with commercial banking, which is where this is done. There's a tremendous interest in that because that's bread and butter. But one of the things I'd like to pick up on is the comment. 很感兴趣的，因为这是他们主要的业务。啊。我相信呢，我的英国的同事也同意我来讲，就是现金的自由流是非常重要的。我们现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢，现在呢， This is an opportunity to revisit some of these things to try and learn from from the crisis to take advantage. From the crisis, 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 to take advantage. And I think that's what we want to be concentrated on. Is what we're? Do you see what we're saying? Mentioned by the way, you just published a book which which covers your own experience across you know a lot of different crises. Do you see something fundamental about the crisis we're now going through that is different than the previous crises you've lived through, or is just this a slightly different incarnation? No, I think there are basic lessons that you see from every one of these crises. Contagion, the need for strong leadership, the need to get the private sector involved, the question of timing. Uh, and it, it, all of these have been,、uh, I would say, voided 
or、uh, not learned by the Europeans. And when I talked to them, they basically say, and they said back、uh, almost two years ago, it's now 19 months. They said, "Look, Bill, this is an isolated situation with Greece." They said, "Yeah, but we had the lessons of Latin America. We had the lessons of the Asian financial crisis." And they said, "Yeah, but we're not an isolated country. 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 We're not an Uh, so, so, Michael, I wonder if I can, I can turn to you for a moment on this. You, you've lived through now a very interesting case today. I think you're on the Barclays Board also, right? Of, of, of the UK politically needing to make a certain set of structural decisions, and then seeing both the social and the business climate implications of that. So that's a pretty good case study. I, I'd be curious from your insight, sort of what could have been done better in that environment to help with business confidence. You know, I, I don't want to be sent to the Tower of London indefinitely. So,、um, <laughs> you can stay in Dalian.、Uh, um, uh, let, let me put it like this: I think it's been very interesting to observe the juxtaposition between political pressure. Economic reality and risk management. So, if we take, for example, the enormous pressure on banks to lend to SMEs, at the same time, the regulators are doing as many breaks as they could. They are trying to increase the dramatic rate. So, you can see the juxtaposition between what people send public and what they send private. And I think the Bank of England has been putting pressure on banks to lend to SMEs. The fact is that with the shock we had, this is why I know it happened in the UK and I suspect elsewhere. We've seen massive deterioration. 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 We've seen massive de
。我们看到人们他们不相信企业家，他们不相信啊、呃、政治家。我们国家的这个投票率是很低的。那么，所以我们重要的一点呢，就是要建立起来一个呃信任。重要的是，那么在过去几十年，呃，为什么会出现这样的信任缺失呢？ Everyone is responsible. Actually, the, the crisis that we've gone through, the politicians, the regulators, the bank boards, the risk management, the credit rating agencies, all the analysts who pushed it on, the shareholders, the of course, the, the, the people who really suffered most, the people who did not cause the issue. Ah, they all have to take responsibility. Ah, also the ratings agencies. 那么我们现在呢需要能够理解现在的一个政治的一个现状。我们现在有很自由的呃这个媒体，他们呢火上加油啊。那么我们现在呢还有社会媒体啊，社交媒体啊。现在的年轻人他们已经不相信传统的媒体，他们更相信的是啊社交媒体啊。所以我们很重要。Without going to complete panic, you know, and, and I think young people are smart enough to realise there's something badly wrong. And I'm not quite sure how you put it right, except to protest. 方面出了问题，比如说我们在伦敦啊、嗯、街头上所看到的这个暴乱、骚、嗯、乱，我们还看到很多的其他的地方出现的骚乱啊，在英国还有在其他的地方，我想要说。Good level of, of very direct engagement between business and government and around the reality of, of what we're facing. Right, well, the problem is the only two things those institutions share is a lack of well, trust by the public. So, um, uh, Dong Chuan Tan, I'm wondering if you could talk for a second about the role of innovation in the future. Ah, 那么我想问你们一下，那么创新在经济当中所发挥的作用。啊，我们看到有很多的啊国家在过去的十年实现了经济的增长。啊，刚才呢，你讲了很多的关于农业方面的，你们讲一讲啊，在。嗯，经济方面的，你能不能谈一下？啊、嗯，越南在经济方面创新的一些。我们呢是希望能够建立起来一个市场经济，就像中国这样。啊，在之前呢，我们非常的依靠土地经济。Of course, within the last few years, Vietnam already became member of WTO. Vietnam joined the WTO. We improve the the status of private sector much much better than before. And in general, Vietnam, I think, in general, Vietnam on the on the on the right way to develop. But actually, in Vietnam. We find out that the problem is we lack many resources. We have many natural resources, but actually we lack many resources. 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 Of people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our population is so big. We have many people because our Uh, flow between the area. We hope that we can create more opportunities in different areas. And that people can be educated better when they come back. We hope that we can improve the skill of people who are understanding also. And also they can provide the lacking of human from somewhere. And so we hope that we can improve the skill of people who are understanding also. We hope that we can improve the skill of people who are understanding also. 在越南，我们和东盟也加强了联系。So, based on the resource or what we have, we also develop based on the area. 我们不但
Vietnam already signed the ASEAN Charter in the year 2008 already. And uh, we have the economic integration by the year 2015, uh, cultural integration by the year 2020, and even political uh, integration. It means that the, even we are come from the communist country, but actually uh, the communist party is ruling party. But we understand that's how the Malaysia country and Vietnam also improved the legal system where they improved the power of the National Assembly also. Yeah, before national not much power. And so, you know, that's uh, our businessman also more and more involved in the activity of the government. And the government also more and more listen to the business also. It means that now we have the mechanism to work together to maximize capacity and also to improve the, 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 the situation. Also. And we also study a lot from the other, other country and how to make the image of Vietnam uh, in the world better also. Because of some, uh, many where in the world, they think about Vietnam sometimes not much correct also. Because we not much transparency, not much applause to the world. And that's why now we need more transparency, more accountability, and more and more connect with the world also. And that we can improve uh, many situations. Of, of, Professor uh, Khan, I'm wondering if we, we might conclude with you and uh, this, this question of this underlying crisis of legitimacy of, of institutions. Obviously, it, it's very interesting because it, so much of what is built, even what we're hearing from the Vietnam, Vietnamese experience, the ability to have access to international capital, the ability to have access to international technology, was created by institutions that today are seeing their credibility falling faster and faster to lower and lower levels. And so, I mean, how much of the crisis of, of credibility, of legitimacy is legitimate? How much of it is just short-term frustration? And is it something you see spreading relatively uniformly? Uh, I, you know, I think it's a terrific point, appropriately referred to as a cancer. I think that's, that's the right word to use to describe it. And as an educator, you know, I think we are implicated as well in perpetuating whatever some of the problems were. And I think you also said it correctly to say that everybody shares the blame for this crisis. And that acknowledgement is a good starting point to fix. And by the way, has that changed? I mean, has Harvard Business School revamped its curriculum? A, a significant amount. Uh, and, you know, we're just one tiny actor. But perhaps. what would be like a specific example of something that, that somebody graduating from Harvard Business School today as opposed to in 2000 would be different? So let me speak. I graduated 90, early 90s, right? So certainly compared to when I graduated to today's entering class, there's such a deep focus on, on ethical decision making and putting you in dilemma type situations and mm -hmm. real, you know, very convoluted, tangled corporate governance problems that really admit no good solution. And it's a question of choosing between very different uh, bad outcomes, the sort of thing that we find ourselves on corporate boards routinely. Um, so there is a deep focus. There is a debate that says that you really can't teach ethics at that late stage in life. But in any case, I do think it's a good, it's a good, uh, good deep dive into sort of fixing some of these problems. But I wanted to maybe, with your permission, to um, put the problem in a broader historical context. Right? We're talking about capital mobility, and if you, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, if you go back to the frustrated uh, Spaniard or Britain, for that matter. Uh, or somebody in the Arab world lately who's been protesting on the street, that's an expression of saying that I really can't take my talent and put it to good use. And I can't do it because I don't have the information, I don't have the capital gravitating towards me, that's the SME problem uh, in a sense. Um, and that problem is in a way getting more and more severe over time. Uh, let me give you one statistic that I quoted this morning at a, uh, at a, at a breakfast panel also. By the time we get to the year 2050, uh, there is only one country in the world that will have surplus skilled labor, and that's India. You have about 50 million extra skilled workers who won't have anything to do. Uh, of course, this is some sort of straight line projection, so take it with a huge grain of salt. The rest of the world will be short 50 million workers, and that's not an arithmetical artifact. That's just independently about 50 million. 50. And I'm using that to suggest that there has to be an avenue and a channel for that uh, inevitable frustration that comes from 50 million uh, underemployed skilled workers to be let loose on the world. Uh, that's, that's, in a sense, the most dramatic instance of the sort of uh, inter-country and intra-country reallocation of talent that has to occur to prevent people from spilling onto the streets. Uh, unless you think it's impossible, I'll also remind you that a couple of hundred years ago, we had visa-free visa travel. Uh, shocking. Uh, but all our problems are artifacts of the last uh, 50 or 60 years. Most of the benefits of world openness and trade and so on did not occur 
because of the bankers, no disrespect intended. They occurred because of the free flow of ideas embodied in human beings who moved around the world. And until we get back to that, um, uh, if you allow me to end with that idea, uh, we will set ourselves up for all sorts of problems. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks. I think it's a very good conclusion. I'd like to thank everybody on the panel, really, for your time and taking the time to prepare. And thank you all very much for coming.